Hello, Free Code Campers. Welcome to this workshop on declarative gestures and animations in React Native. I'm William, maker of the Can It Be Done in React Native YouTube series. In this workshop, I would like us to do five things. First, to discuss why the topic of gestures and animations is so peculiar in React Native and what are the strategies and APIs we're going to use in order to implement user interactions that run smooth as butter. From there, we can look at transitions. Transitions are the easiest way to animate components in React Native, and we're going to build a component with two states. One state, the cards are overlaid on top of each other. Second state, they are nicely fanned out, and we're going to declare a transition to animate nicely from one state to the other. And then we're going to build a simple timing animation that we can loop, pause, resume, pause, resume using bare metal animation APIs. Getting to know these low level APIs will be the key to success for us to harness gestures and animations in React Native. And then it will be time to add gestures into the mix. And we are going to build this nice wallet user experience. So we can swipe for cards nicely and they animate very nicely depending on their position. Finally, I would like to show you that these gestures and animations integrate very nicely with SVG and we're going to build this really cool uh, circular slider using gestures and SVG animations. This workshop will only be scratching the surface of the exciting world of gestures and animations in React Native. And to conclude, I will give you all the resources that I know of in case you are interested to go further with this topic. In the video description, you will find the GitHub repository with all the code examples, as well as the boilerplate files in case you want to code along in the video. And also available in the video descriptions are the timestamps for each of the different chapters of the workshop. So free code campers, are you ready to discover the powerful world of declarative gestures and animations in React Native? Let's get started. When building gestures and animations, the key to success is to avoid frame drops. We want the user interaction to run at 60 frames per second, which means that we only have 16 milliseconds to compute everything. And this is a very simple diagram of the React Native architecture. We have the JavaScript thread, which runs the React code, and the UI thread, which interacts with all the native components. And they talk to each other using what we call the async bridge. They asynchronously send each other JSON messages. So if your gesture or animation relies on communication between these two threads, it is very hard to guarantee that the animation frame can be computed within 16 milliseconds and you are likely to drop frame. There are a couple of reasons for that. First, because of these asynchronous messages that needs to be parsed and serialized, you might drop a frame on a low-end device. And the JavaScript thread might be busy doing something else. For instance, processing the response of an HTTP request. So maybe you have um, a gesture. So the UI thread says to the uh, JavaScript thread, should I grant the gesture? And the JavaScript thread might be busy processing the response of an HTTP request. So it's not able to reply within these 16 milliseconds and you're going to drop a frame and the user experience is not going to feel uh, very smooth. So the way we're going to circumvent this problem is by declaring all of our gestures and animations beforehand which means that there is no communication between the JavaScript thread and the UI thread. So it doesn't matter if the JavaScript thread is busy doing something else because 
the UI thread is going to be able to do all the tasks it needs to do for each frame. And plus, because there is no communication between the two threads, we are sure that we are able to compute the animation frame within these 16 milliseconds. And I would like to show you an example of what this means concretely. So here I'm uh, dragging around this uh, component and we implemented this example using the default gesture and animation API provided by uh, React Native. I call it uh, vanilla animation APIs. And as you can see here, the um, gesture depends, relies on communication between the JavaScript thread and the UI thread. So to grant the gesture, we need to execute some JavaScript thread. When we move the um, view around here, everything is done on the, because we use this animated event, everything is done on the UI thread. So there is no communication between um, the JavaScript and the native side. And when we release the gesture, we also rely on JavaScript code. And so because we have this mix of uh, imperative code and declarative code, if the JavaScript thread is busy, this uh, user interaction is not going to run uh, smoothly. And in fact, what I can do is to modify the code so that we have the JavaScript thread, we make the JavaScript thread busy. So I'm going to loop 5,000 times and maybe like print something like GS thread busy. And now you see, I cannot move the ball around because the JavaScript thread is busy. And so we are not going to use these APIs because these APIs rely on communication between the UI thread and the JavaScript thread. And what we're going to use instead. So is two libraries, React Native reanimated for animations and React Native gesture handler for gestures. And what these libraries do is that they enable you to implement all the gestures and animations declaratively on the UI thread, which means that when you have your gesture and animation running, there is no communication between the two threads that is involved. So here, if I make the JavaScript thread busy, it doesn't matter because there are no communications between the UI thread and the JavaScript thread. So this is the same implementation, but using declarative gestures and animations using React Native Gesture Handler and React Native Reanimated. And now, so everything is done declaratively. And now I can make the JavaScript thread busy. Up. So, uh, GS thread busy. So now the loop is running, but because I don't rely on the JavaScript thread, you see, I can still move the ball around smoothly. And so this is the heart of the malware declaring all the gestures and animations beforehand. And this will guarantee us to build user experiences that will run at 60 FPS, even on low end devices. In this example, I would like to show you the power of transitions in React Native. Transitions are the easiest way to animate components in React Native. And the way it works is that we can attach an animation value to a change of state in a component. So here I have a very simple component with a very simple state. Toggle is true or false. If the toggle is true, we apply here a rotation, which is index minus one times alpha. So alpha is 30 degrees, pi is 180 degrees divided by six. 
And here I do index minus one, minus one times alpha. So if index is zero, zero minus one is minus one times 30 degrees. So we'll have minus 30 degrees. If index is one, so the card in the middle, we would have one minus one, zero times 30 degrees, zero. So there won't be any rotation. If it's the third card, we will have index two, two minus one is one. So we'll have 30 degrees. So we see here. Here we have the cards constants, which contains six cards. We select three and we calculate the rotation. When pressing this button, we toggle the state. So to its opposite value. And so if toggle is false, we have a rotation of zero. And what we can do here is to use a hook called use transition that will give us an animation value that will go from zero to one when toggle changes. So if toggle is false, the animation value will be zero. If toggle is one, the animation value will be one. And the way the transition from zero to one, one to zero goes, can be a timing function, can be a spring function, and can be any configuration of the animation functions that you want. So let's get this animation value here. We're going to call it transition and we're going to use a function called use transition. Use transition comes from a package called React Native Redash. So we're going to use React Native Reanimated and React Native Gesture Handler for the declarative gestures and animations. And I created an open source package called React Native Redash. I see it as being the low dash of reanimated that provides us with a lot of utility functions such as this uh, use transition hook. But you don't have to be uh, intimidated by it. These are just helper functions on top of uh, reanimated and gesture handler. You can look at the source code of uh, some of these functions to see how it works behind the scene. But these are usually very simple helper functions. So this function takes two arguments. The first is the state we want to transition on, and here it's toggled. And then we can pass an animation configuration. So for instance, here I, by default, use transition is using a timing function, and maybe I want the duration to be 400. You can set some easing. You can have a spring function instead. So here we have our transition, and what we want to do is to interpolate the rotation based on the transition. So here you see we have the view component. Here we use animated.view. Animated.view is an animation wrapper around view so that in these style properties we can use animation values. So here we pass a string, which is a a rotation value in radiance, but now because we use animated.view, this style property can also accept animation values. So here rotate is going to become an animation value. And we are going to interpolate it using transition. So you they so we can write it using interpolate from React Native Reanimated, so the animation value is transition. Input range is 0, 1. And output range is, if toggle is 0, the rotation is 0. If toggle is 1, the rotation is index minus 1 times alpha. So I need to import interpolate. Let's have a look. So you see here it nicely transitions from one state to the other. It looks very cool. Again, speaking of helper functions in Redash, we are going to have a lot of these uh, animation values that go from 0 to 1, and we're going to interpolate always from 0 to 1. There is a helper function called, called mix in Redash. So here we import mix from Redash. And it's the same implementation as mix in OpenGL. So we can pass directly the output range like this. So from zero to index minus one times alpha. 
So just a nice shortcut. And here it is. And the last thing we can do is to change the transformation of origin. So here you see by default is the center of the card. And the way we transform the origin in React Native using the transform API is that we're going to translate to where, so from the center of origin to where we want the new origin to be, do the transformation and translate back. So here we want to translate to, so the default origin is half of the width of the card, half of the height of the card. We want to translate to minus half of the width of the card, do the transformation, translate back to half of the width of the card. So we're going to write translate x is minus card width divided by 2. We do the transformation, which is rotate, and translate back. So translate x is card width divided by 2. And so here you see it nicely changes the transformation of origin. And here again, we have a nice utility function in Redash to perform such a transformation of origin and it's called transform origin. And the first parameter is the new transformation origin. So here we have X, which is minus card divided by two. Y is zero, we don't change it. And the transformation is rotate. And so here it is. So transitions are a great way to uh, animate components in React Native with little to zero knowledge of uh, gestures and animations. So just a great way to uh, animate changes in your component states. <music>1, and so we're going to go from 0 to 1, 1 to 0, and there is a state, play, which is true or false. So we want this looping timing function to be uh, posable and resumable nicely. And in order to implement this timing function, we're going to use all the concepts that uh, React Native Reanimated has to offer, or almost all of the concepts. And one of these concepts are clocks. So clocks are animation values which update themselves across time. So by default, the uh, value of a clock is zero. You can invoke a function called start clock on it. And the every frame, the clock animation value will update itself with a timestamp. And this is uh, this will enable us to build animations across time. Then there is a stop clock function to stop the clock. So the clock animation value will stop uh, updating itself. And there is a function called clock running to check if the clock is running or not. And so the way you can create a clock is like this. So it's clock from reanimated. We want here because we're going to have many re-renders when the state changes. We want we don't want to recreate a new clock every time. We want the clock identity to match the life cycle of the component. So we want to always have the same uh, clock for the uh, every instance of our timing component. And so we can use a helper function for that again from Redash, which is use clock and here for progress we can use an animation value so you would do new value year zero from again react native reanimated but we also want the uh, identity to be preserved across re-renders 
So we're going to use use value from Redash. And these are simple uh, wrappers using a lazy uh, use ref to have. So I need to import from Redash. So what we are going to do is that we're going to use a hook called use code, which allows us to declare animation nodes to be run for every frame on the UI thread. So the function signature, the hook signature is very similar to use effect. The first argument is a callback that returns here an array of animation nodes. The second parameter are the dependencies. Here we have none we want. Uh, this, these animation nodes to have also the same life cycle than our timing component. And so what we're going to do is use the clock to control the animation. If the clock is not running, the animation is paused. If the clock is running, the animation is running. And so by default here, we're going to want the animation to run. So we're going to use start clock. And what we're going to do is assign to the progress value some timing function. So some function that we're going to call run timing and pass the clock as parameter. So let's create it here. So run timing is a function that receives a clock as parameter. And we're going to return some uh, progress value, execute also a bunch of uh, animation nodes. So you can use a block in order to do that. Takes an array of animation nodes as parameter and will execute these animation nodes sequentially. So maybe here I return zero. So the last node in the array is the value that is returned. And so you, know, you see here I'm not um, writing progress equal run timing because these are not imperative instructions that are run on the JavaScript thread, but declarative uh, animation nodes to be executed on the UI thread. So this is here, it's not a code that is executed, but it's a declaration for code to be executed on the UI thread. So we're not going to use the if else syntax from JavaScript, we're going to use a, a condition animation node. We're not going to use equal, but set animation node and so on. So uh, reanimated provide us with all the animation nodes we need in order to declare complex um, animation states and uh, interactions on the UI thread. So let's um, write our run timing function. So I need to import this one from reanimated. So if we look at the timing function from React Native Reanimated, we see that it takes three parameters, the clock. So to uh, you know see where how we evolved across time, the animation state. So finished position here, our position will be from zero to one, right? Uh, time and frame time. So I uh, last. Um, clock values for the last evaluation and zero to one if the animation is finished or not. And then the uh, animation configuration. So the target value duration easing. So you see, if you are familiar to the vanilla animated API from React Native, it's a bit more complex to execute a simple timing function. But this, so the barrier to entry is higher, but this is a way more powerful functions. So this is why I really want us to um, look at the low level of how these functions work, because this will enable us down the road to go much, much further, because these functions are incredibly powerful. So let me copy paste here the function. So timing from React Native Reanimated. And uh, so the clock we get as parameter, let's create the state. So I'm going to create it here, state. So I'm going to assign an animation value for each state. 
position, frame time, time, and we have the config. So two value, we're gonna update it depending, right? Two value is if the position is zero, the so position is gonna be our starting value. If the starting value is zero, the destination value is one. And if the position is one, the destination value is gonna be zero. Duration, I don't know, let's put three seconds. And easing, we can put uh, whatever, I think. Uh, in, out, and it does not like the configuration. So I have, how is the syntax of the using? Here I'm importing easing from vanilla React Native, but I need to import the one from Reanimated. So that should be good. This is where TypeScript is so useful. So here we execute the timing function for every frame, and what we want to return is the position. So state dot position. So you see it animates nicely from zero to one. At one. Uh, nothing happens. So what, at one, what we need to do, so if state.finish equals one, so you see here, we are not right again, we are not writing if else, because this is not JavaScript code that is executed imperatively. This is a declaration. So we use the condition animation node that is a declaration to run on the UI thread. So if the state of the animation is finished, um, we want to reset these animation values. Position we will leave, but we need to update the true value. So let me reset the state. So is finished is zero. We want to loop. Frame time, time we reset as well, because we're restarting the animation. Position we keep. If it's one, it's still one. We want to continue where we were. So state.time. But what we want to change is the destination value. So config to value is going to be the opposite of state.position. If position is zero, the two value is one. If position is one, the two value is zero. So here I need to import these nodes. So you see it loops nicely from one to zero and now from zero to one. Now let's make the animation interruptible. So you see here, you might be under the impression that uh, this is a lot of boilerplate code to write a simple looping animation. There are utility animation functions in Redash that allows you to do these in a few lines of code, because all this boilerplate can be done for you, but I find it to be extremely understand, uh, important to understand how these uh, clocks and animation uh, evaluation uh, work, because this can really unlock the power of complex uh, declarative gestures and animations that will run at 60 FPS. So this is why here we are doing all the boilerplate manually. So. Here we have the state play, which becomes true or false. And the first thing I want to do is to have an animation value that matches the state of play. So if play is true, I want my animation value to be one. If play is false, my animation value to be zero. So here we're gonna create an animation value called is playing. So default value is zero. Here default state is false, so that's good. And we're gonna create a hook, or again, a use code hook that will set the animation value is playing to match the state of uh, the play variable. So, and you see here, 
I could write it here in news code, but I'm, I'm having different dependencies now. So let me show you. So I do is playing. So if play is true, it's one, if not zero. And here the dependencies is play. So when play changes, this uh, instruction changes because it depends on the play variable. And this is why I'm putting it into a separate use code block because I don't want to have a dependency on the play variable here. What I'm going to write, the instructions I'm going to declare here are valid for the whole lifetime of the component. So I don't want to recreate these animation nodes if the play variable has changed. Only is playing. So now we should have the is playing variable that matches the state of the component. And so we're going to test that actually. So we're going to write two conditions. So the first condition is if the state of the animation is playing and the clock is not running, so not clock running, and here you see you have to count the parentheses. We want to start the clock. We want to start the animation. And the other way around, if the animation is not playing and the clock is running, we want to stop the clock. So I need to import stop clock and the end. Let's have a look. So here I play and I can pause, resume, and you see it doesn't resume at the proper state, but I can pause and I can start the animation. But when I restart the animation, the state of the animation is screwed up, pardon my French. So here, if the clock is not running, so if we pause the animation, we want to reset the time variable of the state so that when it resumes, it resumes the animation properly. And if not, we run the timing function. So let's pause. And now it resumes exactly where it was. Pause. Super. And it loops nicely. So a really cool uh, timing function that, so very low level APIs, clocks, and all these uh, complex animation states, but these are really, these low level primitives are really worth it in order to build um, complex user interactions. And we've seen how we don't write imperative JavaScript code, but use these animation nodes, which are declarations on the UI thread. And so all the primitives we have in uh, JavaScript, if, and, not, uh, we can, the semicolon to have sequential instructions. So we have the block here. So we have equivalent for uh, all the JavaScript construct as animation nodes. And um, the only construct that is, so you can have variable assignments, sequential executions, conditional nodes. The only uh, primitive that is not available are loops. But here, but that's okay because here it's code to be evaluated for every frame. So I hope you enjoyed this example. If this makes sense to you, then you really have unlocked the power of uh, declarative gestures and animations. If you are able to, to um, switch from the imperative mindset to the declarative mindset and uh, understand how you can use clocks and animation states in order to build 
uh, different user interactions then the uh, world of animations and gestures in React Native is your oyster. I think you can uh, really go very far with these primitives. So we have looked at transitions, animations. Now let's play around with the gestures. We have a bunch of uh, cards here. And uh, let's assign some uh, gesture handler to these cards and play around, see what we can do. And so here I'm looping over my cards. And maybe what I can do here is wrap a pan gesture handler from React Native gesture handler. So we can maybe move these cards around. And we need to pass two properties for the gesture handler to work. And we're going to have use again the utility. So it's quite some boilerplate. So there is a lot of animation values to be created uh, to um, uh, properties to be assigned on pan gesture handler. So we're going to use uh, utility function again from Redash in order to have all this boilerplate done for us. But, you know, again, don't be intimidated. You can look at the uh, Redash source code or at the React Native Gesture Handler source code to see, um, you know, what kind of boilerplate is required for these uh, gesture handlers to, to work. But we're going to get the gesture handler from a function called use pan gesture handler. And it gives us a couple of variables, the gesture handler that we can assign here. And the translation vector of the card, the velocity. So when we release the gesture, the velocity of the gesture and the state of the gesture. Is the gesture active? Is the gesture uh, began and and um, so here we assign the pan gesture handler. I probably need to move key here. And the pan gesture handler takes a single children which needs to be an animated view from a reanimated. So here we use animated.view from React Native reanimated. So we get the translation vector here. I think we can assign it to this transformation to see if we move, can move the card around. So we're going to use a transform. And there is a utility function in Redash called translate where we can give it a vector. And it will apply translate X, translate Y, a simple shortcut. So here I can move the cards around, but I should create one pan gesture handler for each gesture handler. So I'm just going to move it here. Uh -huh. So you see, I can move the card, but now if I start the gesture again. It starts from the original position. So we need to save the position in an offset value when the gesture ends. And again, in uh, a Redash, we have a utility function for that. So I'm going to create translate x equals with offset. And the first parameter is the animation value. And the second parameter is the state of the gesture so that we know when to save the offset. So translate X, we're going to do the same for Y. And here we're going to apply the transform. So translate X, translate Y. That's translation. So here I can move the card around and it remembers its um, position across time. And uh, you see when I stop the gesture, it's kind of abrupt. There is no like physical momentum. So what I we can do here instead of using with offset, we can use with decay, which will add some uh, nice decay. And this is where the velocity comes into play because the decay is calculated according to the velocity. So we value with translation X 
velocity is velocity dot oops velocity dot x state is state so same for y so now you see you have this nice up nice momentum when moving the card and you see it's interruptible as well so now let's have a nice wallet animation using these concepts of pan gesture handler and decay so i'm going to move this outside the loop and we're going to move the pan gesture handler to be unique to the view and we want to translate only on the x axis actually so just want to scroll oops we just want to nicely scroll our cards so something is not working because we forgot as i mentioned the single child needs to be an animated view but um, what i'm gonna do because i want to keep this one i think i'm gonna wrap it here and put an animated view Let's see how it looks. Ha <laughs> ha. It's not translate X, but translate Y. Okay. So it translates nicely and we have like the nice momentum effect from DK. So now we want to clamp the values. We're going to use a function called div clamp. So it clamps, div clamp clamps the value with a min max, but we call it div clamp, meaning that, you know, if we go to minus 100 pixels, just a delta of one pixel will be taken into account. So it's, uh, it's much more responsive if you want, if you scroll far back in one of the lower or upper band and want to go back to one of the, uh, within the bounds of the clamping so we're going to add diff clamp here and here there is a trick so there is currently a bug in the diff clamp implementation of reanimated so we're going to use diff clamp from redash so in order to not have this bug so the maximum value is uh, zero right when we're at this state here and the minimum value is gonna be so the length so the height of all these cards minus this height here so this would be minus cards dot length times card height which we have defined here perfect uh, minus the container height which we calculate using on layout so let's have a look so here on, so you see this is where diff clamps comes in if i use only clamps so here I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. Then if I want to scroll back like this, I would have to do all the opposite scrolling that I did. But even though here maybe I'm like 500 pixels right now, I can just immediately go back up. And this is what div clamp does. I mean, I can show you quickly with clamp. So here I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. If I want to scroll up again, I need to scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. And now it scrolls up. With the clamps, diff clamps, 
it's going to be automatic. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, but you see immediately scroll up. And let's look. So the lower bound is not correct. It's pl plus container eight, sorry. So zero and perfect. And uh, very cool. So now let's animate our cards. So um, maybe we want to add. So we want actually now we're going to clamp. So I'm going to call this Y. So if the card has reached the top, I don't want it to go above. I want to clamp its, its value. So translate Y. We're going to interpolate from the Y animation value. So the input range goes from 0 and if we translate to so for the card to be at the top, if it's zero, it's zero. If it's uh, minus card width, so that would be minus card, so card eight, sorry, times index. So this would be our clamping value. So the output range would be the same value, but we're gonna use extrapolate clamp, meaning so this should be the maximum value the card can go, so to not go outside the screen. And so by using, so here we use linear interpolation, these values match one to one. But when we are we have a value, for instance, that is lower than minus card eight times index, we want to be at minus card eight times index, not a lower value. So we're gonna write extrapolate, extrapolate dot clamp. Let's have a look. So you see the card moves on top of each other. Um, you can even add maybe just, you know, if you want to build some effects here, maybe it's minus card eight plus 16 or minus 16, sorry. And you see here you are 24, I don't know. So you already have like here a nice uh, wallet animation. So now we want to calculate the position of each card. And so the position Y is Y plus the uh, index times card height and we're going to use this value to do a couple of uh, interpolations so if the card is disappearing its position is at least at least minus height so from minus zero to minus height, uh, minus card height, sorry. Right? So the here the card, its position is zero. So if the card is on top, its position is zero. If the card is at the bottom here. So what is the position on bottom? It's the number of visible cards in the screen times the height of the card. So that would be visible cards times card height. What are the number of visible cards? So visible cards we do a math floor of the container height, 
divided by card height. And so this is the number of visible cards. So this is so minus one for the range and is appearing is the number of visible cards times card height. So is bottom is appearing. So now we can create some um, scale transformation. So the scale of the card, so we interpolate from position Y. So the input range is, is disappearing, is on top, is on bottom. and is appearing. And the animation values are, so 0, 5, it's disappearing, 1, 1 if it's in the visible range, so and 0, 5 when it's appearing. Let's try that. So here you see it disappears nicely in the background, and it appears nicely here. Um, what we can do is add some clamping. That looks good. Uh, let's add some opacity. So same story for opacity. So I can just add it here. And um, here one, perfect. Oh, actually same value. No. What uh, we want to do here is to not clamp, I think. So you see here, it disappears nicely. And so one thing we can fix is you see when the card appears, it's too far away from the top card. It, it's not super smooth, so we can add some extra uh, translation here. So here we can add. So you see here we don't do a plus again, we use an, the add animation node. So uh, let's call it extra translation Y. <laughs> uh, so which we're going to interpolate from position Y. So actually, let me move these up. So we interpolate from position Y. Oops. So input range. So we go from is, um, is on bottom to is appearing. Output range, so at bottom, the translation is zero. At is appearing, we want we know that at is appearing, the size is, uh, scale is zero five, so the height is card height divided by two, and we want to move it by half of the card height, so it's going to be card height divided by four, and of course, here we want to clamp, so we don't want to go uh, outside these values. Extrapolate clamp. Let's have a look. No, it's not. It's minus. Card height divided by four. And you see now it looks very cool. And um, one thing we can do here and that you see the scroll is not uh, completely over. So we don't want to stop the scroll on. I'm being very picky here, but it doesn't feel nice that the end scroll position is this. So the last card should be at least as uh, the full position. 
So um, here, maybe instead of container, we can do visible cards. Now what do we need to do? So we add container height. Let's try visible cards times card height. Yes. So that looks good. So here our end square position looks much nicer. So you see a pretty cool uh, user interaction using the pan gesture handler from React Native gesture handler. But there are, of course, uh, tons of uh, different user interactions you can build using these APIs. But I hope that this uh, nice wallet user interactions really uh, gave you some um, inspiration on the kind of gestures and animations you can build using these APIs. <laughs>
Canva coordinate, which will give us X and Y position on the Canva. So that will position the cursor onto the circle. Then we move the circle around. So we have a X and Y coordinate, which we can transform to a polar coordinate in order to know the angle theta. And so we can assign the theta value, which will drive the animations of the uh, stroke value. And also maybe we can animate the color of the progress. So maybe we want green at the beginning, red at the end. And um, so if you go on my YouTube channel, I will put the links in the video description. I have videos on how we can convert from one coordinate system to the other. Here, we're going to use, again, uh, utility functions uh, from Redash to seamlessly go from one to the other. So let's get started. So we're going to start with our cursor. And, uh, and once we have, so the cursor is going to write the theta value. And once we have it uh, working, we will look into animate the circular progress component that we have here. So let's look at the cursor. So the first thing we're going to do is to wrap a pan gesture handler so we can move it around. So pan gesture handler from React Native gesture handler. And we need the gesture handler. We're going to use the helper function from Redash. So we have gesture handler, use pan gesture handler. And we're going to get the translation vector and the state of the gesture. Oops, some typo here. And so here we're going to add some translate. But what? So, what we want to do, okay, let's add some translate. So, translate x, we're going to use, so we want to remember the position across different gestures. So, we're going to use with offset. Uh, so, translate x, state, and translate y. Up, translate Y. Oh, translation. Let me apply the transformation. Translate X, translate Y. So I can move the cursor around. Super, but now it needs to be, you know, whatever is the position within the bounds of the circle. So this is where we need to convert these values into polar coordinates. So I'm going to create X, Y, and we have a center vector, which is the middle of the screen. So let me create a vector. So center is uh, x is width divided by 2, y is height divided by 2, which we need to import from the Dimensions API. So we have width height from Dimension get window. So let's convert these into polar coordinates. Um, so we have polar equals, so these are Cartesian, so we're going to use Cartesian to polar. If you're interested, the math behind this function is super interested. I have some uh, videos on this topic. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend you check it out. So first argument is a point, so we have x, y. And we probably need to carte no polar to no Cartesian to polar. That's correct. And so we get um, the theta angle, which we can assign to this animation value. The radius here, the radius doesn't matter. What we need to do is to set the radius to be the radius of our circle and convert back these coordinates to 
uh, Cartesian coordinates. So uh, we're going to have x translate x, y translate y. So we're going to convert polar to Cartesian. Theta is uh, polar dot theta, no problem, but radius is not the radius of our cursor, but the radius of the circle. So that will bound the cursor to only move around the circle. And the second parameter should be polar to coordinate to Cartesian. No, that looks good. Uh, is this radius? Radius is R. So you see, we have an issue. So translate X with the center, the origin of, so I think I should set center here. Sorry, okay. It's not Cartesian to polar, but Canva to polar. My mistake. So Canva to polar. And we can set the center of origin here. So center, and here it's Canva to polar to Canva. I was confused why it didn't need to use the center of origin, the origin that didn't make any sense. So now still actually it doesn't work. We have a weird. So actually here, the center, because it's not the um, container, so it's not the window, but the content, which is the size here, this container of the circle. So if I, here I put background color red, so you see our center is not height of the screen divided by two, but radius and radius. So let me uh, update this. So center. is radius and so now it animates nicely so now we need to set the theta value and so you could set the value to be polar dot theta directly, but polar dot theta goes from zero to pi and minus pi to minus zero. So here the value would be uh, minus pi divided by two and not a uh, three quarter of two pi. So we want to normalize the value to go from zero to two pi. So we're gonna create use code and we're gonna assign um, up and we're going to assign theta to be polar dot theta but we need to normalize theta so normalize theta we take theta so as an animated node so if theta is less than zero, so it's uh, minus zero minus pi. We need to add two pi, so theta is less than zero, it's theta plus two pi. If not, it's the theta value. So from zero to pi, theta is okay. And now if let's say we have minus pi, minus pi plus two pi would be uh, two pi 
uh, three quarter of two pies. So it's going to be two pi minus uh, half of uh, one pi. So uh, this should give us proper values for theta. And uh, here, let's see. We're going to interpolate the color on theta to see what we, we get. So let's use interpolate. So colors are numbers, and we have uh, interpolate color functions in Redash. So we can interpolate on theta. And uh, so input range, so theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we have 0, let's say pi and 2 pi. We're going to use three colors. Output range. Uh, we can use style guide, palette, uh, secondary, primary, and primary and tertiary. Let's have a look. So you see here the color updates nicely. So now let's animate our SVG circle and we're going to use the dash stroke array to animate the progress of the circle. So we want dash stroke array to be circumference of the circle. So we want one empty uh, stroke to be the circumference of the circle, one full uh, stroke to be the circumference of the circle. So we can animate really from zero completely empty to uh, one completely full. So the circumference of the circle is um, 2 pi times the radius and um, the length of the arc of circle is going to be radius times the theta, right? And um, so this is going to be the offset, the dash stroke offset. So let's, uh, so we need to calculate the circumference. which is going to be 2 pi times the radius, which we get here, yes, as property. So we can assign dash stroke array to be so circumference, circumference. And we can calculate the so here okay so the dash stroke offset and here so we're gonna have a couple of animation values so it's not a circle but an animated circle and animated circle we use the create animated component in order to have the wrap animated wrapper that can accept animation values as property so now we need to calculate stroke dash offset which is actually the same formula than here, but instead of having the full angle, which is two pi, we have, we use theta. So it's gonna be multiply theta by radius. Let's have a look. Looks good, but also uh, very strange. So the stroke, color, appears to be good background color um, we need to add stroke width And now there is a strange uh, offset value here. So here it looks like at zero, it's correct. And then there is, you see some offset value that goes further and further. And I think here I wrote it down because I wrote radius is 
the radius minus the stroke width divided by two. That makes sense because we want the center to be here. So I should probably replace radius here. Yeah, now that looks good. Up. It's fun, isn't it? I could play with this always for hours, but really a nice example on, of how gestures and animations uh, seamlessly integrate with each other. Free Code Campers, I hope you enjoyed this workshop on declarative gestures and animations in React Native. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're interested to go further with this topic, I will link to resources in the video description. We discussed the heart of the matter. Why is this topic so peculiar in React Native and the APIs and strategies to use in order to build these very smooth user experiences? We looked at transitions, the easiest way to animate React Native components. And then we implemented a simple timing function using the bare metal reanimated API. And we've built this timing function to be uh, interruptible so we can pause, resume, but also we can also loop the uh, function across time. Then we built our first gesture. So we had these cards and we could move them around and swipe them and we've used the uh, uh, gesture API to build a nice uh, wallet user interaction. And finally, we've looked at how SVG can be used to seamlessly integrate with these gestures and animations. And that uh, allows for a range of really fun and uh, creative user interactions to be built. If you go on my YouTube channel, I have dozens of videos on this topic. For instance, in the case of the SVG example, we used functions which leverage trigonometry behind the scene, right? Where we converted from polar coordinate system to Canva and vice versa. I have videos where I really explain the math behind the scene. And trigonometry is very important in animations because as soon as you have something that has some sort of rotation, it's gonna involve trigonometry. And I have quite some uh, videos about this topic. And I have also more advanced uh, videos on the topic of SVG animation. Uh, for instance, you can use SVG animations to morph from one SVG path to the other. And um, there is a also really interesting examples with Bezier curves. There is really, we only scratch the surface. There is really tons of great things you, you can build uh, using SVG animations. We looked at the pan gesture handler but there are, of course, different kinds of uh, gestures in React Native, the tap gesture handler, the pinch gesture handler, the rotate gesture handler, and I also have videos on these topics. I will link to these uh, resources in the video description. And we use the transform API to move things around, and we even did um, transformation of origin. The transform API from React Native is incredibly powerful and uh, we've uh, not even looked at all the things it has to offer and I also have uh, videos on these topics on how to build uh, advanced 2D transformations, how to save the state of uh, complex transformations across gestures and I even have a video where we go to the third dimension. So if you're interested I hope uh, that you will check it out. So I'm really looking forward to Talk to you soon, and in the meantime, happy hacking. Minus pi, minus pi plus two pi would be uh, two pi, uh, three quarter of two pi's. So we would have, so minus pi, plus two pi is pi. But so, ah, minus pi divided by two, so minus pi divided by two, plus two pi is gonna be three divided by four of pi.
of two pi. So it's going to be two pi minus uh, half of uh, one pi. 